Martin Delaney of the Football Association of Ireland. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, right? Y- you've been in demand over the last while. It's been busy. Yeah, yeah. it's been busy. Um, with the probably the FIFA crisis has been the the biggest thing. We do have big games coming with England and Scotland, which are very important. But I think the FIFA crisis probably has been, you know, the the biggest thing almost has happened in more football for 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 such a long time. And uh, funny enough, we came out and did a BBC interview last week saying we wouldn't be voting for Blatter. And the morning that people woke up on the back pages of papers reading we wouldn't be voting for Blatter, six or seven FIFA officials get arrested out of their hotels. So probably was fortunate yeah. um, that, that that we made that call. You know. Yeah, and and you've been sort of anti blatter for a, a good oh, a long time. Yeah, I mean, in in, in two thousand and nine, I called him an embarrassment to FIFA and an embarrassment to himself. He called me over about that, and I, and I said it to him across the table, just like I'm talking to you, with one or two explosives. Right. To, yeah, yeah. And that was in a room. And so how he, did he react to that? Um, <laughs> he said, "No one speaks to me like that." And you said, and "I said, well, I do." And that was it. So your cards are marked then, right? Well, I think he knew he, he knew how I felt about him. Um, I, I I never liked his modus operandi, his style. Um, I don't want to get too personal about him, but he, he had a huge ego, or has a huge ego. And I never felt he loved the game. If I was being very honest with you, I never felt he had that feel for the game. Um, I love the game. I love grassroots football. I was born into it, and I still play. My best pals are still the lads I played with. I was very lucky that Shea Brennan, who won a European Cup medal with Manchester United, lives in our house for six and a half years. Yeah. You can imagine that. I deliver bread every Saturday morning with a European Cup medal. With so it's, in, it's, in yeah. your, it's in your blood. Yeah. Yeah. And I never got a love for the game from him. It was all politics and how money could be dispersed and all about him. Okay, so how was he elected five times then in a row? He's the best at divide and conquer that I've seen in my life. If people think Charlie Hawhey was a good politician, this guy was the best I've ever seen in action. He was able to make Europe the big bad um, wolf, that all the money was in Europe, all the best players were in Europe, we were robbing from the Africans, the Asians, and he built a, a very strong political base outside of Europe, but was still able to contain 15 countries within Europe. You only had to look at who was appointed as has head of delegations for World Cups or all that sort of stuff to see who he was taking care of in in, in Europe. Indeed, some daughters of some prominent... When you say taking care of, what, they were getting jobs? or Getting roles. They were getting roles, okay. roles, expenses. Um, some family members ended up working in FIFA of serious people in Europe. So he was able to get 10 or 12 votes all the time out of Europe. Just explain to people how the voting system works in FIFA. One country, one vote. Ireland have one vote. Brazil have one vote. Right. Andorra have one vote. San Marino have one vote. East Timor have one vote. So, Do you think that's a fair system? Um, it is. <laughs> it is if it works like anything in life. Um, I think but it allowed, it allowed him like oh, yeah. a, a small amount of money to a small country could get a, a very cheap vote. I, I Correct. I remember being at the FIFA Congress in Morocco when the guy from East Timor, East Timor, were just brought in as a member of of um, FIFA, and four times in the East Timorian president's address, he called Blatter Your Excellency, right. and he presented him with a sword of some kind. I turned around to our president at the time, David Blood, and I said, "You know, if Blatter pulls out a gun now and shoots somebody in the front row." East Timor would probably still <laughs> vote for him. And that's how he got revered. And he, he was brilliant at it. I mean, if you're going to give him some bit of credit, and I, I don't admire him at all, but he was resilient and it took a wave of momentum to finally get him to even accept the stepping down. And he, he was brilliant at dividing and conquering and getting the Asians and the Africans behind him. I've never seen anybody better. And he's a ladies' man. Apparently, he's had a few ex-wives along the way. Um, but, but. What, he's 79? 79. Yeah. And what height man is he? About four foot. So is Napoleon complex, <laughs> yeah, is it? A bit like that, yeah. <laughs> and she met, uh, he met Emma, you know, my, my, my partner yeah. in, in, in Vienna recently and, uh, he stared at her for seven or eight seconds and he said, I approve of your new girlfriend. Ah, yeah. go away. I he didn't say you. that. I swear to you. But maybe he was lost in translation. Is English his first language? No, no, no. No, that was it. And, you know, I just asked him to move on. I approve of your new girlfriend. Yeah. I said, just move on, please. So he thought, he thought that that would flatter you oh, and flatter her. Yeah, that's and it, yeah. And then, you know, and she, she's a great girl. I mean, I love her very much. And it was an extraordinary moment. She, she was here, she told you, just stared at her for seven or eight seconds. I approve of you and her girlfriend. Did he give her the up and down thing? Uh, well, stared at her. And right. she stared back. And, and I said, move on now, please. And then he moved. Right. <laughs>
Okay, we, we've spoken a lot about Blatter. I, I just want to find out about this, like the money and the amount of money that's in yeah. soccer worldwide. Uh, but we have to take a break for the news at four o'clock. We go to the newsroom and to Eileen Dunn. Thanks very much, John. Um, <clears throat> John Delaney's still with us. So you're you're a main part of the news there. So FIFA had FIFA Ireland, um, and the turnover was 113 million during its years of business. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange one. Um, in 2001, there was a World Cup, obviously, in Japan and Korea in 2002. 2001, our president at the time, Milo Corcoran, and General Secretary Brendan Menton were asked to serve on this board of a company formed in Ireland uh, for tax breaks, OK? Right. I'm a young honorary treasurer, and it comes to a meeting in October 2001. I checked the minutes yesterday, and the two lads had agreed to, to serve on this board of FIFA Ireland. Uh, myself and a fellow called Michael Cody objected. We said you should have come to us first, to this board, or the FAI board, before you went and, and, and agreed to this. So then we looked for an indemnity for the FAI that any transactions of that company would not affect the FAI in any way. And funny, when you checked the minutes, come back 14 years ago when I was 33, <laughs> I'm delighted when I read that yesterday because I said, look... Relieved. Rele- <laughs> relieved and happy <laughs> because... Yeah. because even back then, Ray, there was a lot of a lot of complaints about Blatter. I mean, I, again, last night I read a document that some guy got onto the, the board of FIFA in 2000 and it was $100,000 a year. If you're on the board of FIFA back then, it's $100,000. I believe it's $300,000 now. I believe so. So that's a, that's a temporary... That's a temporary, just role, a, a voluntary yes. role, yeah. okay? <laughs> and Blatter backdated two years for him as if he was there in 1998 and he got $200,000 of a sign-on payment, if you like, and then okay. $100,000 onwards. So even back then... Um, there was a lot of concerns about Blatter as to how he ran FIFA. So when this company was established, I wanted, along with other board members, blue water between the FAI and and and, and So FIFA was Ireland. it a clearinghouse for money? or It was, as I understand it, an intellectual property rights company for the World Cup in 2002. So they sold intellectual property rights for, for Japan and Korea. Ah, I see. Through, through right. the Microstone, the IFC, IFC Centre, for many other countries. And it's a legitimate company, as I understand it, and was to avail of a cheaper tax rate. My own view for what it's worth at the time is we shouldn't have been anywhere near it. We shouldn't have even... Our job is to develop football in Ireland. Okay. Tell people where the money comes from, the millions and probably billions. Sponsorship and TV rights. T- TV. I mean, TV is huge. Right. T- the, the billions that FIFA earn is TV and, and sponsorships, of course. But, I mean, we all know the value of, of, of football. The World Cup in itself is the biggest singular tournament in this world. So it brings in billions of, of, of dollars, billions of euros. But that, that comes from TV companies around the world. Yes, it does, yeah. Because I heard a guy on the other day saying that the actual host countries oftentimes lose money on hosting it. Well, they can. It's possible to do that, um, like maybe Toronto did for the, for the, for the, famously for the Olympics. But normally, normally, I know Germany made money in the World Cup 2006. It was a very well ran World Cup. Uh, no doubt about that. But FIFA gets the largest. They get the big profits. And then that money is dispersed to okay, the national just associations. Say, for example, um, yeah, so our team are sponsored by three yeah. mobile now. Mm. You would negotiate that deal, would yes. you? Yes. Okay. Do FIFA get a cut of that sponsorship? No, no. no. They, they, they don't get anything, anything from the National Association. So FIFA have a centralised part whereby they sell all the television rights for the World Cup right. and the sponsorship for the World Cup and all the other world tournaments that they run. They don't get anything out of how the FAI is run. There might be a nominal percentage for home games which they get on attendances, but it's not big money. And all the FAI get from FIFA um, directly would be $250,000 a year, as does every other national association. It's okay. called for that financial assistance program. And what was that $5 million? I heard you talk <laughs> the other day. And no, we, we, yeah. uh, the no, way it uh, to me was that like, we were being a nuisance over the yeah, Thierry no, Henry handball, uh, and they said, go away and shut yeah, up, and no, here's I'll $5 you, million. Uh, I'll tell you exactly what happened there. Um, we, we felt we had a legal case against FIFA because of how the World Cup um, hadn't worked out for us with Henri Handball. Also the way Blatter behaved, if you remember, on stage, having a snigger us and having a laugh at us. So that day when I went in and told him how I felt about him, yeah. and there were some expletives used, um, we came to an agreement. We came to an agreement. And that was a Thursday, and on Monday the, the agreement was all signed and all done. Um, it's a very good agreement for the FAI, a very legitimate agreement for the FAI. I'm bound by confidentiality for naming the figure. You've put a figure out there, right? And and fair play to you. But what was the what, what was the agreement? What, what well, it was a payment to the association. To, but why to, was the payment? What? To not to proceed with a legal case. All oh, right. Not to proceed with a legal case. And in there, then decided to put in a confidentiality agreement where I can't talk about the, the amount involved. Yeah. 
Um, you've used the figure there. Well done to you. Right. Okay. Um, well, it's, it's out there. It was a good and a very good legitimate deal for you. Okay, so we, 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 we spoke about Chuck Blazer last week, and this is a man who started off as sort of a weekend soccer dad yeah. <coughs> in yeah. the States. Yeah, yeah. And he went up to the point where he had seemingly uh, uh, an apartment in Trump Towers, one for him, one for the cats. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then you have um, Jack Warner from Trinidad yeah. and Tobago. He says he's going to sing now. Yeah. What hap- What do you think happens? So they negotiate a deal with, with say, Coca Cola. What, what do they? They say we will give you the rights if you give me ten million, and we. It, it seems to be as simple as that. Is it? It seems to be now, which implicates the people who are giving the money as well in a major way. I think it starts. There's, there's various ways it happens. One is when when a World Cup bidding tender goes up. It seems very apparent to everybody now that certain countries have a budget put aside to bribe P- FIFA officials. So a company or a country that's bidding for a World Cup um, will have a fund, it looks to be, a set aside to say, by the way, if you give Warner money or you give Blazer money, we'll get their vote. That seems to be how the World Cup bidding was working for certain companies. And England, to be fair, don't have a fund like that. Right. You know? And England never had a chance of getting the World Cup. It's yeah. right. and but they it's spent they spent twenty million on their bid. They did, but on a proper bidding process. So they go around the world and they, you know, they bring be it Beckham or you know yeah. Prince William, or whatever it is, and they spend money advertising their their bid. But they don't use cash, which is correct. They don't pay people to vote for them. So that says to me, England, you know, who deserve a World Cup, or I'd love to see a World Cup in England. They've got the infrastructure, stadiums, all the rest. Right. But they, they can't bribe, and nor should they bribe, but they're then fighting a battle with two hands. Okay. Right, aren't they? So I, they were going for the 2022 World Cup, mm-hmm. and Qatar yeah. got it, which yeah. sounds ridiculous because the summer temperatures were up to 40 degrees. Now they're saying they're going to do it in, winter, in, yeah. in December, mm-hmm. which is going to mess up a lot of the, the European leagues. Yeah. But now that Blatter has resigned and you know, all of these uh, court, you know, all of these um, people have been arrested, do you think that all of that's going to fall apart and they'll be offered up for tender again? It's a great question. I've answered this a couple of times this week. Uh, the, the issue I have here is what rights would Qatar have against FIFA? They've probably spent five, six, seven billion at this stage, your know, building stage. Right, okay, so. Yeah. If they take it away from them, will they sue FIFA? Clearly, Qatar has far more money than FIFA ever would, and they could bankrupt FIFA. So when you open the door of a revote, which a lot of people would welcome, you've got to be very careful of the ramifications that would have. And I have another concern about Qatar. All the, there's a lot of people dying in Qatar building those stadiums, which is also wrong. And again, FIFA, in my opinion, have never really properly addressed that either. You know, we've tried to raise it through UEFA onto FIFA. But the problem with FIFA is this. When I brought ideas to UEFA, you could always get a point. You know, you, you say we want to increase the teams from 16, 24 for the Euros. Okay, John, we'll have a look at that. We want to have 13 cities host the Euros. We want Dublin to be part of that. Yes, John, we'll look at that. Okay. You go to FIFA, you meet yes, a blank wall. Okay. Just a blank wall. And my hope for FIFA is that, because there are dark days ahead, every day brings a different story, doesn't it? You know, and I mean, I was okay predicting a lot of what happened up until now. And now it's hard because... We don't know what's coming next, and you never do. But I'm hoping we get a president quickly that actually kind of brings some light to FIFA and brings some governance and culture changes. Have you ever been offered a bribe? Ever offered a bribe? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, if, not, if, if not, not on my salary. If it's, so, if it's so endemic. I was going to say part of the reason you're on such a high salary is that, <laughs> so you don't, you won't yeah. accept price. But no. but if it's so endemic, surely in some place along the way somebody would have sidled up to you and go. No, we've never been. So all my work is in UEFA, so right. we're doing stuff in UEFA. So you, UEFA is clean. UEFA is as clean as it gets. You know, right. I mean, what does I, that mean? But I, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's still three UEFA members of UEFA exco under suspicion for the World Cup as okay. well. You know, there, there's a separate the um, the Spaniard and the um, Turkish guy. Right. They're, they're under investigation as well. But I was never in a position um, to award something. So I was never in a position where I was awarding ah, a World Cup right. or a okay, European yes. Championship yes. or something like that. And I mean, look, I just think that you're paid to do your job. I, and I know I'm paid very well. I accept that. I'm very happy in the job. But anybody who would come up to me and offer a bribe, I would say, listen, because you've offered a bribe, you're not getting anything. Yeah, so so you were saying that your, your contract with the FAI is till 2020. Mm-hmm. And what happens then? Well, before we get on to that, actually, yeah. let's just, what's the future for FIFA, do you think, before we get to your future? The future, future for FIFA is we need a president who brings governance and cultural change, you know, and there's tough decisions for FIFA because the way FIFA is set up is that people who are elected from the confederations come to the board of FIFA. So how they're checked in their area for being proper and fit persons to run football 
um, FIFA then gets handed these people. So we have to find a way that whoever comes forward to the board of FIFA are clean. And funny, it may be, I'd actually think somebody needs to come in, particularly in the next six months, while Blatter, Blatter should step down now, first of all, and an intermediary should be in place to run FIFA so that we get ready for a proper presidential debate. And whoever's going to become president needs to have a manifesto of real change. And maybe that person doesn't come from within football. Maybe it needs somebody from mm. outside of football for a period of time to bring governance changes through. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be Vice President of the Olympic Council of Ireland as well, and I work very closely with Pat Hickey. And Pat would have seen the changes in the International Olympic Committee. I mean, their Salt Lake City was there, what, what we're going yes, through now, yeah. and they cleaned it up brilliantly. They brought in changes, um, forceful changes. People had to be resigned, retire, leave, and governance changes were brought into place. It's not rocket science, Ray. Right? It's not actually rocket science to make these changes. But the will must be there. And whoever gets to run FIFA going forward need to be clean and people honest. Who, and yeah. honest, yeah. yeah. Have to be. Would you aspire to being, to going outside the country? No, not really. I'll no, tell you, no, you're happy where you are. I'm very happy in my personal life. I'm very happy in Ireland. Um, you know, maybe at some stage I might consider going to the board of UEFA. I've been asked in the past to think about it. But it's not on my agenda. Okay. My agenda is running Irish football. So that, that, that was <laughs> a game behind closed doors today at one <laughs> o'clock in the Aviva Stadium yeah, yeah. against Northern Ireland. Yeah, no score. No score. No score. And you were saying that you, some hardened fans wanted to be ball boys. I was great fun, actually. It was good down there. I mean, the game was, was, wasn't was the best game of football, but I think it'll be a good workout for both teams. But Davy Kyo and Wayne O'Sullivan, these guys who follow us all over the world, we had 44, 45 year old ball boys today. Right? <laughs> right, right. It was, it was good to see the lads. They haven't missed the game, so, so they're, they're, they, so they, England, they, they England, okay. England at the weekend. Yeah. The, big game. And it's 20 years since the last time in Lansdowne Road, which was a bit of a disaster. Um, what about, um, Jack Grealish? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big question. Um, I think first of all about Jack Grealish, that goes away now because England and Scotland are big games and Jack won't be involved in no. either, for, uh, for, in either match. He's got to make a decision in his own time as to who he wants to play for. Uh, I hope he plays for us, but whatever he decides to play for, we'll fully respect it. He has a big decision to make because the next move he makes determines it forever. He's played with us at underage level, um, at under 21 in particular. And once he plays a competitive game for England or Ireland, he stays with them for his career. But even if he changes to go to England now, if he decides I'm going to play for England at under 21, he can never come back to us. Right, okay. He can never come back to us. And I wish him well in that. Uh, I hope he comes to us. He's a good young talent, but it's his decision. But how do you court somebody like that? Well, from from our point of view... You're good at the old court. (laughs) (laughs) That's off the field. (laughs) But, um, no, I I think you do your best. I mean, I've met his dad a couple of times. Um, I've treated, you know, at the FAI, I've treated Jack's dad well, Kevin. Anytime he wants to come to matches, you'll make sure he's treated well. Jack came over down to 21's awards. You make sure that his family, you know, brought across that, Mm. that, that... their, their whole family are, are accommodated. And you can only say to a guy enough times, I'd like you to, to, to come and play for us. And even when some players declared for us, you know, some of the, the, the Northern Ireland lads declared for us, I would have met their families and said, listen, it's a big decision. Um, the James lives, McLean. Yeah, yeah, in particular. Um, and McGeady and a few others. And said, listen, if you're coming to play for us, it's a big decision. We're here to support you and make sure that they understand that we're here um, to talk you through yeah. whatever issues would, would occur. And then it's up to the player. The player ultimately makes the decision. In Jack's case, I hope he comes to us. But if he doesn't, I wish him well with his career with England, if he does. Okay. Uh, so it's going to unravel, isn't it? If, if Jack Warner now is is going to sing like a canary, it's going to the whole. We've only seen the beginning of the FIFA story. It's a, it's a house of cards for me. I think when you see the U.S. Attorney General, not the Department of the Attorney General, the U.S. Attorney General come out and say FIFA is corrupt, um, they shake the tree and they shake it upwards. Um, they they get people at lower levels, yeah. like in the mafia, like in the mafia. And they're always aiming for the top. And okay. when I saw her on television, I mean, I knew Blatter would not survive. Even when he won the vote, I knew it was the beginning of the end. I mean, everybody was against him, be it sponsors. Nearly 40% of the football national associations, players, managers, um, the, the FBI, the Swiss authorities, David Cameron. If you just look at the list. Yeah, it's amazing know, he got a yeah, list. Yeah, yeah, and, just, and he's stuck in for a while, you know, so yeah. he's, he's, got, he's got a bit of... There's a great movie in it. There is, there is a real movie. FIFA made a movie recently that cost $25 million. Did they? Uh, they did, they did, about actually. About themselves? Yeah, about themselves. God, that's ego, isn't it? Yeah, that is, that's incredible ego. But the real movie's on its way. But, right. it, but it has to finish, this chapter has to finish first. Thanks, John. Thanks very much.